Hello everyone and welcome. We hope all of you are safe and healthy and enjoying our first ever Knowledge Rocks Week, Spring into Colour. While we would all prefer to be together in person this week, we are pleased to find new ways to bring our GIA community together. That's what today is all about. We will share some exciting news from the Institute for our alumni community, as well as announce the winner of the Jean-Maria Bouchelati Award for Excellence in Jewelry Design. I can't wait. One of my favorite proverbs is a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. My journey with GIA began 40 years ago, and I know firsthand how an education at GIA can change the trajectory of someone's life. When I finished high school, I didn't want to go to college as I didn't know what I would study. And so my mother insisted that I take a year long secretarial course at the local college. My first job was as a junior typist at Scottish Jewelers in Salisbury, Rhodesia, now Harare, Zimbabwe, where I grew up. I found the jewelry industry fascinating and it followed my passion for rocks and shells, which I have always had. I left Zimbabwe for a year to live in London and when I returned, I went back to Scottish Jewellers in their marketing department. My boss at the time, Peter Winhall, was studying the GIA courses by correspondence. This was long before e-learning and today's digital way of learning online. I convinced my parents to send me to America to study to be a graduate gemologist at GIA in Santa Monica. Whilst there, I became friendly with a classmate, Alan Friedman, whose family owned Borsheim's Fine Jewelry and Gifts in Omaha, Nebraska. After working in a small grading lab for a year and a half there was a drastic market downturn, and I experienced what so many people are experiencing today. We were cut from a five-day week to a four-day week, which gave me more time to study as I was taking the British FGA courses at the time. And then we were cut to a three-day week. I had to figure out how to make my rent and car payments, and Alan offered me a role as a sales associate and appraiser at Borsheim's. I accepted for one year, and stayed for more than 30. My billboard on Interstate 80 when entering Omaha for the first time did not say, work for Warren Buffett for 20 years as CEO of Borsheim's. Instead, it said, welcome to Borsheim's as a $5 an hour sales associate. The Friedman family were very kind to me and welcomed me both personally and professionally and gave me many opportunities for growth in buying, sales and management. In 1993, I received a call from Warren Buffett, whose company, Berkshire Hathaway, had purchased Borsheims in 1989, and he asked me to come down and meet with him that afternoon. Our CEO had recently resigned for family reasons, and Warren offered me the role of president and CEO. I spent the next half an hour telling him all of the reasons why that wasn't a good idea. I didn't go to college, I was 34 years old, and I was female in a very male-dominated industry. Thankfully, he was convinced that I could be successful in the role, even when I was doubting myself. And I accepted and led the company with an exceptional leadership team for 20 years until I joined GIA in 2014. I was extremely fortunate to be blessed with a second dream job at GIA, an incredible and vital leader in the gem and jewelry industry, and to come full circle from being a student there decades before. A piece of advice I'd like to share with you is to never negate the importance of the relationships that you make through life, as they can have a significant impact on the tra trajectory of your professional and personal lives. It's also important to step out of your comfort zone and take some risks as opportunities come your way, often disguised and not clearly apparent at the beginning, as was my case in moving to Omaha. After your GIA education, you become part of the network of 150,000 alumni in chapters around the world. Building relationships and networking is so important for success in an industry like Gems and Jewelry that is so personal but holds so many possibilities. These connections forge new pathways to an exciting business and building a meaningful career. This past year, has really forced us to focus on the importance of relationships. The pandemic pushed all of us to reevaluate our personal and professional lives. It reaffirmed the importance of community and accelerated the use of technology, changing how we connect, learn and innovate. This shift has opened up new possibilities for us at GIA 
to elevate our global alumni engagement in a whole new modern way. For the next 30 minutes or so, we'll give you an inside look at the new alumni chapter, admire fabulous jewelry designs by our very talented GIA jewelry design students, and celebrate our exceptional alumni. I am thrilled to share with you that Catherine Ramirez, the new Executive Director of the Alumni Association, will unveil exciting 2021 plans for the new Alumni Association. I think you'll all agree that the future is very bright and there are so many incredible opportunities that lie ahead of us, ready for us to seize and build upon so that our future is even brighter than our past. Thank you all. Every Day You Rise is a chance to shine. How do you stand out and shine brighter in one of the most brilliant and colorful industries in the world? Gem and jewelry possibilities are endless. Introducing the new GIA Alumni Association. Whether you're a student, a recent graduate, or an industry veteran, we are here to help you explore, navigate, and learn all the possibilities this industry holds through networking opportunities, specialized courses, and resources exclusively for GIA alumni. Join a community where we challenge each other to new heights, where we are stronger together. Whether you're looking for mentorship, career opportunities, or to connect with other rock stars around the world, our community of 150,000 alumni will help you get there because together we shine brighter. Hello everyone and welcome. We are thrilled to have all of you with us. There are several new and exciting developments at GIA in 2021 that I would like to share with you. One of the most anticipated announcements is increased educational opportunities beyond traditional course offerings. Gym education has always been at the core of GIA's mission, and now we're making it more available than ever before. Throughout the year, we'll be rolling out new continuing education seminars so that everyone in the gym and jewelry industry can update their skills and knowledge across diverse topics in gemology, jewelry manufacturing, and design. Our current continuing education seminars were crafted in response to extensive feedback from our alumni. We hope you will find these seminars valuable and timely, and we look forward to receiving further recommendations for industry topics that will most benefit you. Another exciting announcement is that we're launching a new and updated GIA Alumni Association aimed to maximize the potential of our alumni network. Not only will we provide increased access to educational resources specifically for alumni, but we will strive to expand networking and mentoring opportunities. In the meanwhile, we will continue to host live virtual webinars like our GIA Knowledge Sessions so that we continue to learn and share gym knowledge even while we're apart. For those of you not familiar with the GIA Alumni Association, you might wonder, what does the Alumni Association typically offer its members? Getting involved with our Alumni Association provides you with the opportunity to connect with fellow alumni in your local community and around the world throughout the industry and supply chain. Local chapters typically host events throughout the year including meetings, speaking engagements, field trips, and socials. These events provide an opportunity for alumni to meet new people, reconnect with old friends, and keep abreast of what is happening in the gym and jewelry market. The GIA Alumni Association has a global network of 150,000 strong and provides an amazing opportunity for our students and graduates to have international reach. Now, as much as ever, GIA is committed to helping the industry shine. We will continue to help host and promote events sponsored by both GIA and our alumni chapters. As we dive into 2021, it is our goal that together through knowledge and community, we make an even more brilliant and lasting impact on the industry. Up next, I would like to welcome GIA's Duncan Pay and Lori Balin to tell us more about our talented student body. I'm Duncan Pay, Chief Academic Officer of GIA. And I'm Lori Balin, GIA's Senior Manager of Jewelry Manufacturing Arts Research and Development. For millennia, jewelry has carried tremendous cultural and emotional value, fusing nature's beauty with people's artistic sensibilities. Now more than ever, consumers are purchasing jewelry, especially individually designed and handcrafted pieces, 
as ways of communicating love and marking significant occasions, such as anniversaries, graduations, and engagements, that are spots of brightness during today's difficult times. It follows that the skills needed to design, work and texture metals, and set gemstones into jewelry pieces are in demand as well. Although GIA is most known for gemology, the study of gems, we also teach the creative side, jewelry designed through traditional hand-drawn techniques and by computer-assisted design and manufacturing, or CAD-CAM, as well as jewelry fabrication and repair. Since 2017, we partnered with the Gian Maria Bucciolati Foundation to create a prestigious competition specifically for GIA's traditional jewelry design students. Chosen by peers, faculty, and ultimately by a panel of distinguished judges, the winner gets exposure in the design world as well as a free trip to Italy. In 2020, more than 100 GIA students competed to be finalists for the Gian Maria Bucciolati Foundation Award for Excellence in Jewelry Design. Nine finalists were selected from seven GIA campuses. You'll hear more about this in a moment. All I'll say is that it's always a source of wonder to me that many students who've never tried to sketch produce such truly beautiful inspired designs. Laurie will now tell you more about GIA's jewelry arts programs and the Gian Maria Bucciolati competition. Laurie's team, which includes specialists in jewelry design, CAD manufacturing and production, collaborates with our faculty to create new jewelry arts course content and to continually improve existing programs and courses. Laurie, it's great to have you with us today. Can you tell us a little bit more about GIA's jewelry manufacturing arts courses and programs? Certainly. I lead content development for our global JMA courses, which in addition to jewelry design includes our 27-week graduate jeweler course taught only in Carlsbad, our 27-week JDT or jewelry design and technology course taught in Carlsbad in New York, and our seven-week CCC or comprehensive CAD CAM course taught in Carlsbad, New York, and London. You can find details about all of these courses on gia.edu. Catherine shared the exciting changes coming to our Alumni Association, including new continuing education offerings. We are currently developing several continuing education courses for JMA students, including courses for those with previous CAD experience or for anyone who wants to build on their existing design skills. If you've already taken CCC or JDT or a CAD course but want to continue expanding your skill set, you might want to consider our new ZBrush course, where you can learn about adding organic elements to your designs. Or if you want to move beyond using Rhino plugins to create settings for your designs, you should consider taking courses that we are developing for Rhino 7, including a course where you can learn how to create settings and another where you learn the new SubD tools for Rhino 7. Our goal in offering these advanced CAD courses online is to provide greater flexibility for working professionals using the latest technology. We are also developing a new abbreviated online jewelry photography course and two sketching courses, including an exciting online digital sketching course where you can learn how to communicate your design ideas digitally using an iPad, Apple Pencil, and Sketchbook software. Sounds like our alumni and students have a lot to look forward to. Laurie, can you tell us a little bit more about the jewelry design course? I'd love to. The students we are honoring tonight were all enrolled in GIA's jewelry design course. This course is taught globally at our campuses in Carlsbad, New York City, London, Bangkok, Mumbai, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Taught over nine weeks, this course teaches design inspiration and theory, motif development, and traditional drafting techniques so that students learn to lay out designs accurately and to scale. Students learn rendering techniques for metals and gemstones to bring their design ideas to life. All of the designs you will see shortly were painted with watercolor. Students who would like to compete for the Jean Maria Bucciolati Award submit one of their projects for consideration. Laurie, can you tell us a little bit more about the competition? Of course. Despite the challenges of COVID 19, over 100 students in nine classes completed their jewelry design studies in 2020. Following several phases of selection, nine finalists were evaluated by a committee of gem and jewelry experts. This year's judges were Shelley Sargent, curator of the Somewhere in the Rainbow collection, Victoria Gamelski, editor-in-chief of JCK Magazine, Alishan Halibian, owner and jewelry designer of Alishan, Alan Revere, award-winning designer, author, and educator, and Remy Rotenier, owner and jewelry designer of Remy Rotenier. The student designs were evaluated based on a number of factors, including, does the rendering meet GIA design class criteria? How original is the design? How well does the design reflect the stated theme, motif, or inspiration? Does the entry look comfortable to wear? 
and does it look achievable from a technical manufacturing point of view? Gian Maria Buccellati was a very well-known and respected designer. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, what the winner receives? This is the fourth year GIA has partnered with the Gian Maria Buccellati Foundation to present the Gian Maria Buccellati Foundation Award for Excellence in Jewelry Design to GIA Jewelry Design graduates. The Jean Maria Buccellati Foundation sponsors this award as a way to inspire beginning jewelry designers and to honor the work of their founder, renowned designer Jean Maria Buccellati. Well, Laurie, I can hardly wait to hear the big reveal of the winner. Yes. Before we get to that, let me show you a quick video featuring the designs of our 2020 finalists, followed by an interview with our president and CEO, Susan Jock, and the chief officer of North American Strategies for the Jean Maria Buccellati Foundation, Larry French. Hello everyone. Hello Larry. It's wonderful to see you again for the fourth annual Jean Maria Bouchelati Foundation Award. I would love to ask you a few questions about Jean Maria and his fabulous work. First, this competition was named in honor of Jean Maria Bouchelati. What was he like as a person? That's a simple question for a very complicated man. He was a tough Melanese businessman. And that's about as tough as you get. Uh, he was strong with a very powerful personality. That's one side. The other side, he is about, was about as sensitive a man as I've ever known in my life. And when I say sensitive, I mean sensitive in regards to art, any form of art, including his, his uh, own. He was just very sensitive to beauty. So these two things were all meshed together. He was a, obviously a very successful businessman. He had stores all over the world. But he had the mentality much more of an artist than he did a, a businessman. He, in his life, and I was with him for 25 years, I never saw him put business ahead of beauty ever or, or, or put profit ahead of passion. He just didn't do that. He didn't, have, uh, he didn't have hobbies like most successful businessmen. He didn't, he didn't golf. He did not ski. He had no private jet, no private yacht. His hobby was his work, and his work was his passion. And uh, he was a man, if I, and I couldn't possibly, but if I would describe him in one sentence, he was simply a man who lived his entire life for beauty. That's fabulous. Okay. Thank you. What were Jean Maria's designing rituals and habits when he was creating a new piece? Well, he was old school, quite obviously. 
uh, and he drew freehand, no, no computer programs. And that was kind of not his time, you know. But he drew very, very accurately, very detailed, and he, he drew mostly for the artisans that made his work. Every, now and then he would do a design that would be for a particular client, for the client to, to see. But the majority of time he, he designed for the workmen in a way that they could understand what he wanted. Um, he was a 24-hour-a-day designer, and by that I mean I don't think there's a time he was never not thinking about it. He carried a small pad and a pencil and kept it in his pocket. But as far as a designing habit, he had a favorite design time. He had this huge wooden desk in Milan in his workshop. And when all the secretaries had gone and all the workmen had gone, the artisans, and he was there alone, he would put on Bach or Mozart, and he would sit there, and he would just get so intense with his head down, and then after half an hour or so, he'd raise his head with a big grin on his face, and you knew he was happy, and the design was finished. That's incredible. Yeah. Really remarkable. That's the way he worked. Did he have a favorite stone he liked to work with? Not a stone. He loved the color combination of blue and green. And you will see that in not only his jewelry, but you will see it in silver objects of art, malachite and abbas together. He loved that color combination. But he would use the, the I hate to say normal, but normal, very fine ruby, emeralds, of sapphire and diamond. He would use those. But I think he, his great joy was to use stones that most people had not heard of. You will appreciate this. He, he loved to take a stone nobody had ever heard of and design something so great they would never forget it. Wow. And the other thing that he did, and I, th I think this was a great gift of his, he could, he could look at something that was, at first glance, not, not very beautiful. But he would take that and he'd create kind of an environment of beauty around it that would make it beautiful. We were in Tucson, famous Tucson. We were in Tucson one year, just getting ready to leave for the day. And he found a pearl. And the pearl was sort of pear-shaped, but it was distorted. And, and as it went up towards the top, instead of coming to a point, it just took a hard right-hand turn. <laughs> it was grotesque. <laughs> looking thing. And I couldn't figure out what he was going to do with it. I knew he couldn't make a pendant because it, at the top it went off like that. He couldn't make earrings because he only had one. So about a year later I saw it and he had made it into the body of the, he made it the body of a huge peacock. Oh. And with rubies and sapphires all around it. And the way he solved the problem of it going to the right, he simply had the peacock looking to the right. <laughs> <laughs> he was a genius. He was. Yeah. And can you tell us a little about the Winner's Week in Italy? Where they will go, what they will see? Sure, to, to a degree. When we started, Mrs. Bucciadotti, the president of the foundation, when she decided to support this, and we knew we had this week to work with, we wanted to do something so they wouldn't spend their time sitting in airports waiting for the next flight. And we narrowed it down to three cities that had very good connect train connections so that they would not have a day that they were not sightseeing. So they will start in Florence. We have an associate in Florence that will meet them. They will go from Florence by train to Venice where I will take over. And when we're done in Venice, we will go to Milan to finish the trip in Milan. We chose those three cities for several reasons. Florence, because it's just possibly the world's greatest collection of art. And what we hope on these trips is that the winners see things that come back into their creations that it inspires them. We chose Venice because it's Venice. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's one of the most exotic cities yeah. in the world. And then on into Milan, where Mrs. Bucciolati lives. And hopefully, so far, we have been able to arrange a meeting with her, and we hope to do that. And also, Milan is just one of the great cities. And, uh, but we want, them, we want them to be on their own. This is not a guided trip. They are completely on their own to explore. But someone from the foundation each day will touch base with them and um, try to maybe take them and show them something off the tourist track. When, when I take them to Venice, there's a place in Venice, a secret place for me, that if you're there at sunset, you don't see the sunset, but if you're in this particular place, the sun, the effect it has on this, it takes you right back to the 1600s. You're, you're, you're back in time. Like a, like a painting by Canaletto. It's just that. So I've taken a couple of uh, the winners there, and, and they have liked it very much. Well, what an extraordinary experience for the winner to because have. Because they will see the monuments on their own. Everybody sees the mon monuments. But Italy, I've been there so many times, but what I remember about Italy is not the monuments. It's certain moments. Yeah. If, you go, if, <laughs> if you go down the Grand Canal, on a starry night at midnight, you will not forget that the rest of your life. You're right. The way that the lights light up those historical buildings. Oh, what an incredible adventure for the winner. One last question. Jean Maria passed away before the competition was formed. What do you think he would have thought about it? Oh, I think he would have loved it. It is it's so logical. First of all, he was one of the a group of men that, that founded the, the Italian Gemological Institute. He loved gemology, he loved stones, and he was president of that for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Plus, his great passion in life was designing. So here, the Gemological <laughs> Institute has a design class. It was a, it was a natural, That's and he would be extremely proud. I know he would. Wow. We appreciate it sincerely. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we truly appreciate your time, and we know that our students will as well. At this time, I'd like to announce the winner of the fourth annual John Maria Bouchelati Foundation Award for Excellence in Jewelry Design. Congratulations to Bell Sin Ting Wong from the Hong Kong campus. Miss Wong's design features 18 karat yellow and white gold, diamond, enamel, jadeite, pearl, and sapphire. The piece is inspired by the Better Splendens, also known as the Siamese Fighting Fish. Congratulations. Thank you again for joining us, and I look forward to seeing and meeting many of you in the future. We hope that you enjoyed today's event. Thank you again to all of our speakers. We couldn't have had such a successful event without your time. Please stay connected and interact with us on our social media platforms, and be sure to keep an eye out for exciting announcements about our future. We wish you all a wonderful and prosperous year ahead.